Yeah, let's take a look at um, a lovely topic and I'll give it a big title for you called Qualifying Your Clients. That's what I'm looking at here, Qualifying Your Clients. Now the whole point here is that you need to be able to qualify the people that you do business with. Now we're in a boom economy at the moment, how long that lasting for I don't know, but you can tell we're in a boom economy because builders are really busy. I've got this thing called the skip index, you look down my street there's usually two or three skips and uh, that tells you the economy is doing well. And plumbers, of course, you phone them up for an appointment. They don't even return your call at the moment, do they? You can tell we're in a busy, busy period. So I was chatting to my builder, Andy, and I said to Andy, I said, how do you cope when you're so busy? How do you deal with the customers when you're so busy? Because they're not trained salespeople. And he, said, he turned around and he says, it's easy. He said, now, what I do is I ask them whether they've got planning permission and building regulations approval for the work they want doing. If they haven't got it, then I walk away. I thought that's really quite clever, isn't it? He only deals with people who have got planning permission, building regulations approval, before he'll even consider quoting for the work. And that makes you think, because in, in, in our role as advisors, salespeople, uh, mortgage advisors, agent in life advisors, um, you're very busy, and we need to deal with um, people when we're too busy. We need to be able to qualify our clients. And, and it may well be that you've got a lot of clients who don't go ahead with your proposal and you get a lot of I'll think about it. So that's another reason where you need to start qualifying people. So if people say to you, you know, I, I'm not sure Paul, I want to think about it, that tells me you haven't qualified people properly as well. Um, or, or you might ask the customer if they want to move forward with, with your ideas and, and they might want to balk at it and you get a lot of rejection. So in these situations you really do need to have some kind of, of qualifying system in your business, a solid one that you need in the front end. And I've got a couple of ideas for you to help you. The first thing you can do is um, you can say to, to clients, look, I only deal with people that have been referred to me. Oh, Bernie Madoff did that back in the, um, in the noughties. He was a, a crook, wasn't he? Posny schemes. But if, if you can only deal with new clients if you've been referred. And that's absolutely right as well. Um, you could have um, a sluice gate, yeah, which is, you have on locks, don't you? A sluice gate system whereby you've got a client bank of so many people and every now and then you open up the gates for new clients to come in and then you close the gates again. So you make a big announcement, you know, we've, we've got an opportunity because a few clients have retired, so we've got an opportunity now to open up my client bank to a couple of new people, new clients, only a couple, mind you, so contact me when you're ready. And of course that allows people to come into your your, your client bank, if you like, and that's a way of qualifying people because you're only going to get the very best coming in. Um, you could charge a fee for upfront work. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And we had um, the waterproofing guys come round the other day. We were waterproofing our cellar. And um, I asked them if they'd come round to see if it's possible to do the job. And they sent the surveyor around, their, their surveyor, but they charged me 100 quid for that, which they'll take off the bill when we order the waterproofing kit. So people, of course, are charging fees up front. Now, what that does, of course, is it um, filters out the people that are not interested. So if you're in the later life market, for example, and where, where, of course, you're dealing with lots of people, a lot more me meetings, you can charge meetings up front for assessing or scoping the possibility of equity release. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You can charge a fee. There's no, there's no law about not doing that, as long as you're up front with it and you disclose it, of course. That's something to think about. The other thing you can do is you can get the client to do a bit of legwork for you. Get them to complete a fact find before you actually meet them. Put it online, it's easy to do. Your, your systems might allow that anyway. Um, even if you just post them a piece of paper that you fill in and post back, that's okay as well. Or a PDF document that they can key in on, on the computer and then email it back to you. Just basic information. If they're willing to do that, great. You could have some kind of checklist whereby the customer needs to send you various documents via PDF. And I like this system. You can have things like um, you know, utility bills, do all your money laundering checks as well if you want to. That's a good idea. Or you can do a you know, copy of your passport if you want to, all your money laundering stuff and all the paperwork that you need for the transaction. Now, it also proves to me that clients can scan in and email documents because later on down the line, that's going to be really useful, particularly if you're dealing with a lender that, um, you know, that likes to upload documents. 
you don't want to be scanning stuff in in your offices. Get the client to do it and email you the PDF. So it tests to me whether your client is able to create PDFs and documents. That's a really important thing to do. These are all ways of sieving out people that are not interested because somebody's just shopping around. They ain't going to be bothered doing these things, are they? They just want a ballpark figure or whatever it is. So um, it's, good. it's a good thing. Now, even if you're not busy, you do need a qualifying system. If you're not busy, of course, then you'll be potentially wanting to take on anybody you can because you're not busy. Be very wary of that one. Even if you're not busy at all, still be careful on who you take on board. Um, after a while, many years experience, you'll be able to sniff out people that are wasting your time. But that comes with time. And um, of course, I tell you we're in a boom time, but you can tell when we're in our next recession. And the problem with recessions, of course, is that they're always in the past, aren't they? Because it's two quarters of GDP falling in, in, in percentage terms. So it's usually a half a year or three quarters of a year before you know you're officially in recession. Recessions occur like a year before. You can tell we're in recession when you phone up your plumber and they phone you back five minutes later. You can tell them that you're in a recession. So here we are. There's a little thought for you. Remember to qualify your clients. Hope that's been useful. Bye.